Good evening, everyone. Today is March the 12th, 2020. It's approximately 8 o'clock p.m. And you are listening to the Digipire podcast with your host, Mr. John Higginbotham. You can find all of our podcasts at digipire.com slash podcast. Today, we we will be discussing on episode 36... High ticket affiliate offers, where to find them, and how to promote. We're going to talk. We're going to define what affiliate marketing is, which is what all this is about, and which is a major subject of this podcast. So we're going to define what affiliate marketing is about. What is it? We're going to we're going to discuss how to find CPA or cost per action offers, where you're not selling anything, but you collect information and get paid a generous commission. We're going to talk about how to milk traffic from Google with database driven sites and we'll show you where to earn up to $100 to reach call just for getting someone on the phone four or five minutes. I'm also going to go over how to make it personal and add your own personal touch so that you can sell more effectively. Okay? And you can find all of the resources that I mentioned on this episode and or any on this particular episode at digitpire.com slash episode 36 you can find any of the resources i mentioned on any of the respective podcasts on their podcast page so for example last week's show the when i discussed the call centers would be digitpire.com slash episode 35 so we're going to get all we're going to get into all that in just a few moments. I'm just going to update you on a few things that are going that's going on in my life that you might find interesting. And I'm going to do that in just a few short moments. I'll be right with you. Okay, so as you know, I've been, I started this, this hustle of sorts um, at a call center, and I talked about it last week. I haven't actually, I haven't even told anyone about it yet, except my, my mom knows, and one other person knows, my best friend doesn't even know. But I've told two people, and besides you guys, and I don't think, I don't, I'm not, I, can't, I don't know exactly who's listening out there. But I have not told anyone myself personally outside of this platform, the podcast platform, of what I'm doing. So you guys get some some firsthand exclusive information like anyone really cares. But anyway, I'm going to tell you. So I started, I started calling... Uh, I started working as an independent contractor for this call center, and this is my second week doing it. And I've been writing, I've been keeping record, I've been writing down my journey, I've been recording a lot of details, I've been basically blogging privately about it until I get the website journalmyhustle.com up and running. And then I'll backdate every every post that I made, and then you know do it live or do it do it live. I guess what I'm looking for moving forward. But I've yet to uh, to build the website out yet. But it's journalmyhustle.com, and you can read all like the gory details there. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here because I know you guys want to to get what the subject of the the podcast is. So just a, a summary from what I told you last week. I found this on Indeed.com. And it was totally unexpected. I mean, totally unexpected. I didn't expect uh, a reply back. And I certainly didn't expect to actually be working for 
a call center but it's 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 not easy it's not the the easiest i mean it's not it could be a lot harder but it's not it's something that's been completely foreign to me not completely but it's been it's been it's been foreign to me for the, for a long long time because i'm having to give my time to someone else and i'm not not really as i'm in control of it because they they allow you to take breaks and lunch breaks at your leisure because you're an independent contractor and they're she's so far she's not crazy fussy about that she just wants you to when you say you're going to be there to be there which is completely understandable but as far as taking breaks and lunches that's at your own discretion but still you're when you have a block of time like for example I've been working from 11 to 8 11 in the morning until 8 p.m. in the evening because that they're on mountain they're on mountain time the the call center is in Denver Colorado and they want to they want you to conform to to, to their time zones they want you calling you know within their business hours so they actually have a call center there and the Denver area and they started a, a a branch of the call center I guess that's exclusively for work at home and this one this one lady is running the entire operation and she is a hard worker I mean she I don't think the woman ever sleeps I mean I can only imagine what she has to go through that she's having to pull I mean she's training I mean, she has a lot of people under her belt that, that she's hired and, you know, having to deal with all that, the, the ins and outs of all the, the people that she's hired and all their problems and issues, not to mention she's running the, you know, the, the company pretty much by herself, the work at home part of the company, which I think they branched out to a separate company, I believe. Yeah, yeah, they did. And so... <clears throat> Sometimes, you know, there's just so much material and so much stuff to, to learn that sometimes you just have to guess and hope that you're doing the right thing because things move so quickly when you're getting calls and some of the calls are so different. We're actually calling, we're calling, we're calling people for, it's a political, it's, it's about politics and we're, it's basically asking questions and, and of people and trying to, to get them to contact their legislators and and all that and so each campaign is different and some campaigns are harder than others I mean and that they vary throughout the day some of them are real easy like the, the one I did yesterday the, the last part of the day yesterday was a bad day it was a rough day I felt like I was aggravating my boss and I felt like I mean I just felt like she was being short with me, which I'm sensitive, and it hurts. Things like that hurt my feelings. And I just take things too personally, which has always been a problem of mine. But something I just have to deal with. And so, so my mind goes like to to the bad places and the worst place, worst case scenario. Oh my gosh, she must hate. She must not like me. I'm not. I'm not gonna be able to do this anymore, and all that. And I, I have to fight that. But anyway, she's 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 a she's very kind and she's she's very patient. I can only imagine what she goes through, and because I've I've been on that side of the coin throughout my life, I've been on both sides of the coins on like a lot of things. <laughs> so it, this has given me a, a deeper appreciation on when you know when I am the, the team leader because she's the team leader. I mean, she calls us her team, which we are. And when I'm the team leader, which I, that's the role that I have played for a long time now, that I, I've learned a lot from her, just in the in the short, the short. This is the second week I've been doing it, and I've learned a lot from her, already. But, you know, because when you're an entrepreneur, you're in business for yourself, which I am. You, you have to be a team leader. You have you have to be a leader, and and doing this call center job this call center, call center hustle has taught me 
to be a more effective leader so far. It's stressful for me. And, you know, we're not dealing with counts and we're not calling people to sell anything. It's strictly it's strictly politics. And you get some really rude people on the, on the phone, even about that. I mean, and you just have to to let it slide right off your back. What's the word? How are you saying it? You just kind of have to let it roll off your back. That's the word. And that was hard to do at first. Now I'm more used to it. I mean, people are just so rude, and you just kind of like, at the end of the day, you dump all that. You don't even think about it, because if you did, you would go crazy. You don't think about all the, the rude things. Some, some, sometimes it's actually funny, the, the things people say. But I mean, you just get some. You get people messing with you, and the thing that that I'm always worried about is, you know, how to handle that, that call. Do I just hang up? You know, thank you for your time. You just have to be polite. You can't get emotionally involved when someone's rude to you. And you just can't get emotionally involved. And you can't discuss politics with them. Your job is not to sit there and discuss politics with them, which some of them want to do. You're just here to get their opinion and get them to take an action, such as calling their legislator, which you patch them into into doing that, which that, that one's a lot harder. I did worked on that one yesterday, and that one's a lot harder. So yeah, it's interesting, and you can you can with this I can make as many I can work as many hours as I want to, which is very very nice. You can work seventy hours, eighty hours if you wanted to. You can you can work all the time. And so I've been filling my day up because I mean that's more it's a steady income, and it and like I said I'm learning a lot, and it gives me a sense of of camaraderie. What's the word? I, can't, I never can say that word properly. Gives me a sense of 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 more a purpose of of doing something now just get, it's something different and it's really helping me in a lot of different ways like financially of course so I don't, that's going to help tremendously like it does for everyone no one's doing it just I mean to volunteer just because they you know the same with the overtime though you don't get since you're an independent contractor you don't get overtime pay which is fine with me i have no problem with that but so yeah when in my shift i have to i, ha I have to compl i have to focus you know right on that job i can't be doing other things and multitasking i have to focus on that job because the calls come in so fast you don't have time to do anything else i mean sometimes there's like a few minutes delay but usually she has you switch to another queue so there, it, it doesn't last long there might be 10 or 15 seconds and that's it and that's when i can think to myself and, and think about my future and all my problems and and all my plans for the future and, and all the things that have been bothering me and in that short amount of time 15 seconds so yeah I, I can do a lot of thinking in 15 seconds and I've made a couple of decisions and there's that there's 15 second 15 second increments so I'm rambling now at this point I'm going to get started with the content episode 36 we're going to define affiliate marketing and we're going to talk about how to find high ticket affiliate offers. And if you're interested in my little call center hustle and the, the journals that I'm keeping with that, you can check out journalmyhustle.com. And if you're on my email list, you'll get a notification when it goes live. If you're not, I'll, I'll mention it here from now and again. But I've been keeping a keeping journal. I want to backdate my previous entries. I've been keeping a lot of details without giving away too much information, of course, because I don't think they would like that. I'm going to assume they would not. So anyway, I will be right with you in a few short moments. I'm going to review my notes, get a drink, and I'll be right with you. It's very windy outside. I hope I don't lose connection. Can you hear that?
Okay, guys and gals, episode uh, 36, High Ticket Affiliate Offers, where to find them, and how to uh, promote. First, I want to say I apologize for starting so late. I know some of you guys are in different time zones, and if I'm fortunate enough to still have you listening this late, I want to thank you in advance. There's really no way the way it's set up for me to know who's who is listening live. I don't know until after the sh- after the show how many people are live or a- how many people actually listen to it live, and I never know where they're actually from. So I don't know. I don't know any of that information. If I paid, if I I could pay to get that information, but I'm not at the point where I'm willing to to pay for that. So anyway, if you are listening to this and it's very late in your part of the world, I want to thank you so much for for listening to me and listening to me share what I know about affiliate marketing. So with that being said. I want to define affiliate marketing and affiliate marketing is getting a commission for a product that you don't own in its simplest in the, the simplest definition I can think of and it could be it could be for it could be it could come from something that someone buys like say for example they bought something off Amazon and you referred them to Amazon to, to buy whatever whatever Amazon is selling and you get a you know a small commission for that. It could be you know, a digital product that you get a commission for, like something from uh, ClickBank.com or or JVZoo.com even. Or it could be a commission from a CPA a CPA network or a cost per action network such as Max Bounty. Where people will pay, or companies will people where companies will pay you a commission for for completing an action, like for a phone call, for example, they will pay you know up to a hundred dollars for a five minute phone call for Direct TV on CommissionJunction.com, CJ.com, and actually someone had gotten in trouble or got sued by DirecTV or somebody, I can't remember exactly the story, it's been a few years ago, they were just doing just that. They were they were using a, they were squatting on a phone number, that, I think it was 1-800-DIRECTV or something, it was an affiliate basically, that squatted on that number, DirecTV didn't own it, and they were doing some kind of shady stuff to get phone calls, and and I'm pretty sure, even though that it did not say in the news, the newspaper clipping, or the whatever I was reading at the time, that that was the that was the same. But yeah, you can even get paid for that. So it might not be something that you sold. It might be something that that someone pays you for to you know DirecTV will pay you a hundred dollars to get someone to talk to him on the phone for five minutes. Lawyers will pay you know, a lot of money sometimes to 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 send them leads for clients. And so though there will be affiliates or marketers that will post bill post uh ah post advertisements on billboards and just wherever on pretty much on behalf of the person they're getting leads for. So on on behalf of the attorney or what whoever that that they're working with. And a an affiliate network such as Commission Junction will facilitate that. So they're the go-between between the marketer and the advertiser, which the advertiser would be the attorney or Direct TV, and the ad- the marketer would be me or yourself. And we're also called publishers. And so that's affiliate marketing in a nutshell. And now I'm going to discuss how... I'm going to discuss some of the high ticket offers that you can get and one I had already mentioned and then I'm going to discuss how you actually get the leads for get get the, the leads or, or make the sales or make the commissions that that you can profit off of you have to excuse me I'm not on the, the top of my game tonight it's storming very badly here now and I'm afraid the power's going to go out of it at any time.
so yeah that's affiliate marketing in a nutshell so becoming a call center agent if you want to go the route of of actually working for someone and get paid I mean there's something to be said for having a steady income it's a, it takes you know sometimes it takes a long time for a business to to reach critical mass where you're actually you know have enough money to, to earn a living and, and pay your bills and that kind of thing but sometimes people just for all kinds of reasons just they don't have the, the time or the money to, to get it off the ground so working as a call center agent is a a good you know a good part-time hustle a good full-time hustle and a, a good way to, to make some extra money so that you can work it around your life you know whether you're a mother a father you have another job or whatever no one can ever have too much money so i'm not going to go into all the advantages of of having an, ex, an extra income and an extra side hustle but i'm going to get straight in to how you can make it happen how you can work for a a call center and get paid how you can work from home from a call center and, and get paid i'm going to go over a, a few of the, the different different types of different uh, companies and the different requirements that that each one has and they're all over the place I mean the requirements are all over the place that the level of freedom is all over the place but typically the so becoming a call center agent if you want to go the route of of actually working for someone and get paid I mean there's something to be said for having a steady income it's a, it takes you know sometimes it takes a long time for a business to to reach critical mass where you're actually you know have enough money to, to earn a living and you a hefty commission and I kind of stumbled onto it back you know a long time ago when when I first started because so I was building building websites and all that kind of thing so I decided that I wanted to have my own hosting company and I thought oh, that, I'll, just, I'll just like the whole idea about it and my distant cousin's partner my third my third cousin's partner at the time which he's died since then but he worked for IBM so he he's kind of like he kind of like got me onto the idea and we really went back and forth and exchanged ideas and so I was really I was really I was really into that and so I started throwing up some ads on Google and at the time advertising.com was a big thing I could advertise on there and had some banner ads and it was very very expensive to, to do that and I got a few customers, but I quickly realized that I did not have the economies of scale to 
to properly to properly support the people that I was hosting because they had a lot of questions, they had a lot of problems, and I just not I just was running out of time, and I was only making like five or ten or fifteen or twenty dollars off each one, and, and all the money that it cost to advertise. I just was not making, I was actually losing money and I was losing my uh, sanity in the process. So what I had started doing is I was started building websites and re and getting and selling them on eBay and getting hosting customers that way. And instead of hosting them myself, I would refer them at a time to HostGator. I do something different now. And they paid on a sliding scale of $50 or up to 100 Well, with that and that. That's kind of how I built my my little my little hosting side hustle. Except I didn't host anyone. I just referred them, and I built the website to refer them. So I did. Yeah, I did pretty well with that, and I still do that to this day. I have. I I, I still do. That. Like a huge source of income, but 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 it, but it's. I enjoy doing. It's more of a thing that I enjoy doing, and it's one of those things that that you can do too. It doesn't. It, it, anyone can do it. You just have to have, I guess, the tenacity, the tenacity and the drive to do it, and you have to to learn a little bit about building the websites, which is not hard. So anyway, hosting, hosting is a good way to to, to find high high dollar uh, commissions. And I'm not talking. I'm talking about high dollar commissions, like a hundred dollars or plus, and you definitely can do that with hosting. And you just have to build the website. You make money on the website, and on the back end, you make money on on the hosting because the hosting company A plus is the one that I use now, and they will pay you on a sliding scale based on the, the customers that you refer to them. So yeah, and then you also have you're develop, you're making a customer database that you can sell them other things, such as SEO services and plugins and all the stuff that goes along with building a website. A lot of times, these people that are building websites are entrepreneurs, so they're receptive to to like selling loans and other information products. So it's, you just kind of create your your own little ecosystem there. And so another source of high ticket offers is ClickBank and JVZoo. ClickBank is usually better than I think, if you're, if, especially if you're first starting out, because you don't typically require permission to, to run offers on ClickBank. And there are several in there that are high ticket, and you refer you refer them, and you get you know five hundred dollars per per sale, or up to a thousand, and some of them are recurring. So Clickbank.com is a good one to to use, and I want to put a couple of my favorite ones on on the the episode webpage digitpire.com slash episode 36. I'm not going to go into them here because I'm going to run out of time, and this podcast is going to be uh, I've shortened them to 30 minutes. It's going to go over 30 minutes, but it definitely cannot go over 45 because of that is all the time I am allotted. But yeah, if you go to ClickBank and and research there, and I can put some a couple of my favorites in the resources section on the podcast page. And then finally, CPA networks. Like a CPA network is a cost per action network where they pay you for performing an action, not necessarily not necessarily making a sale. And that could be they pay you for an email that you've collected or an action that the person has taken on the website. I remember back a long time ago that advertisers would pay you. And I'm not exa- I, I have my theories on what they do with the information, but I'm not, it's just too much to go into right now. But they would pay you a dollar, up to $2 for every zip code that someone would put into a landing page. And that was a long, long time ago, but I did very, very well with that actually used to spam oh, oh my god go into that <laughs> i'm not going to go into my my emailings but anyway that is another way you can do it now i'm going to talk about how you can how you can make those sales and how you can drive at traffic to those kinds of offers if you just give me a few short seconds Okay, so how do you drive traffic? How do you get people to look at what you're selling? And 
you do that what you do that i did it through email marketing back when i first started and you can still do that to this day you want to create your own audience and you can do that the most effective in the most effective way via email and you collect emails by running solo ads there's a lot of solo ad vendors i'd use udemy.com and you can do it on facebook you can use banner advertising but the key and the secret to making sales online is traffic, 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 traffic. And traffic means clicks. Clicks mean people. And people mean money. God, that sounds so shallow when I say it like that, doesn't it? But anyway, that's what you want to do. You want to drive traffic to your offers. And you want to collect email addresses. You want to make a bridge page. A bridge page meaning uh, you make a little video or, or tell, tell your story before you send them to uh, the, the affiliate offer. And... So, so you can you can buy traffic on Google AdWords, the banner ads, and all of that kind of thing. I'm not going to go into a, a lot of detail about it right now because I'm running out of time. But you can check out MakeHighTicketSales.com to find out more, find out more details on how I drive traffic to my high ticket offers, and we discuss. How to use segment, segment, segmenting, segmenting your email list for maximum benefit, which is going to be a subject of one of future podcast. But traffic, traffic, traffic. That's what you want to do to get people to, to buy what you're selling. And they'll sell it much more. They'll, they'll be much more willing to sell it if they know who you are and they know your story and they, <clears throat> they all that kind of stuff. And you can do that through uh, social media. Heck, I mean, on Facebook, it's been going on for a while now, but people are selling selling jewelry and makeup and just anything you possibly can imagine on Facebook Live and it just blows me away and I just love it, love it, love it. Especially nowadays when, this time, when people are not wanting to, to be in public and, you know, they want to work from home and all that kind of thing. So, yeah, it's just, there's a lot going on. It's a really fascinating time that we're living in. Kind of a scary time, too, you know, with this, this viral, this coronavirus and all that kind of thing. But we'll make it like we always do. I really appreciate you guys spending your valuable time with me. You know, I really, really appreciate it. Stay safe out there. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And have a wonderful weekend. Wonderful weekend. And be safe. Bye-bye. Oh, well, before I go, you can listen to all of our podcasts at digipire.com slash podcast. You can find their resources for... This episode that I mentioned at digipire.com slash episode 36. And I will have that up within 24 hours. You can follow my little call center hustle at journalmyhustle.com when the website is up. And if you want to get on my email list, you can do that on any of my, on any of the, anywhere on digipire.com. Or you can visit me on Facebook at facebook.com slash jhig54 or you can find me at my website johnhigginbotham.com and that's all for me i'll talk to you guys next week same time same place bye bye